you everyone for coming. I want to thank Lisa and all the great folks here at Montfort Heights uh, Library for inviting us. My name is Stephen J. Rolfus, and this handsome devil over here is Doug Weiss. And we're here, we're going to talk about Cincinnati theaters and its history, and hopefully bring back a few memories uh, from days gone by. Uh, I don't know if, I'm sure everyone here has had a similar um, experience like me. When I was a young man, about 12 years old, one of the greatest things that I could do on Saturday, after a whole week of these teachers at Matthew Duvall Elementary laboring under the misconception that I actually cared about long division, <laughs> and my friends and I, we got to go to the main theater on Hamilton Avenue, and I remember the inside of that place, the volume was like a Who concert, with all the kids there yelling and screaming, and those were some of the best days of my life. Now, like I say, I'm Steve Rolfus. I'm the one who did the writing on the books. Uh, Mr. Weiss here uh, provided photography. Uh, the young man with the uh, camera there, that's my son Jordan. He's with Beagle Rampant Productions, and we're going to be putting this puppy up on YouTube. And he wants me to remind you that I also have a Facebook page. Stephen J. Rolfus. <laughs> it's called give Stephen him a, J. Give him a like and a share, and it's good. <laughs> we have another author who provided a lot of vintage photographs, Phil Lynn. He could not be here tonight. He's one of the people running the streetcar in Cincinnati. He's trying to figure out how they managed to run into each other in the uh, parking lot. But Henry Pickett, back in the 1800s, he was a slave in Virginia. He was able to buy his freedom, bought freedom for his wife and his children. They came to Cincinnati. They opened this uh, dance hall back then. It became famous because there was a brand new kind of music that was starting in the South, and it was called the blues. And all the music and the musicians would come up the river, and they would get off in Cincinnati, and everyone went to Pickett's. And when they were in Pickett's, of course, they're trading uh, uh, music with other musicians, and from there, it would go further up the river. Consider how it was in the 60s. If you wanted rock music, you thought immediately of the Whiskey A Go-Go. This was the Whiskey A Go-Go of the 1800s and blues. People came from all over the world to go to that place. And any black <coughs> person could get in, no questions asked. White people, rich people, wearing jewels and fine dresses, they could come in. Uh, one of the white Irish uh, people who worked on the docks, if he tried to get in, well, there was someone who would show him where the door is and where Front Street was. Before you had the regular theaters, you had the opera house. Now, they didn't just do operas, they did plays, they did musical productions, they did lectures, they did a little bit of everything. One of the most famous was Pike's Opera House, which was down on um, 4th Street in between Walnut and Vine. Now that was built by Samuel Nathali Pike, and he was a distiller. Coming from Cincinnati, of course, you know there had to be a connection to a little booze. Now, one of the uh, people who uh, performed there was Junius Booth. Um, you probably heard of his brother, 
or is it son? I'm not sure. Are you a Brother. close relation? Brother. Brother, yeah. Uh, John Wilkes Booth. In fact, Junius was in Cincinnati. I believe he was performing Hamlet. And word came from a telegraph operator up on Court Street, a young fellow by the name of Thomas Edison who got word from Washington, went running out into the street saying, Abraham Lincoln has been shot. And word spread, it was John Wilkes Booth who did it. Word spread very quickly downtown, further down, reached 4th Street, and the next thing you know, Junius Booth finds out his brother just shot the president, and he fainted dead away. Uh, the next one, of course, is the Alvey Theater. It is probably the grandest of all uh, downtown movie palaces. Um, it was, uh, it actually did, all through its history, did live shows and, and film shows, both. Um, it was built in 1927 at a cost of uh, $4 million. And if you remember being on the inside of it, you can certainly see that it was <laughs> they spent at least $4 million on it. It was very elaborate on, on the inside there. It was considered the finest movie palace in Cincinnati. And uh, some of the famous actors that um, appeared there was Fred Astaire, Grace Hunt, Hayes, Smith, a comedy duo called Smith and Dale, uh, Jackie Gleason, Ben Burney, a jazz musician, and of course, Jack Benny, um, the comedian. Um, he was 39 years old. He was still 39 years old. Yeah. Still is. <laughs> uh, the theater was torn down in 1977 after, if you'll remember, a lot of protests. A lot of people were upset about it. Uh, many of the interior fixtures were sold at auction, and some portions of the outer building are still in existence. <coughs> oh, anyone remember seeing this? The building still exists on uh, Lynn Street. This was the most incredible theater. It opened up back, well, you can a, give the dates. 1914, it opened up as a vaudeville theater. The vaudeville theater is called the Casino. Later on, now, how I remember it, in the 1970s, early 80s, it was the Regal Theater. Every week you went by, and they had a different kung fu movie. <laughs> Every week, a completely different kung fu movie. Where did they get all of these silly movies? No, but that was incredibly popular with the kids, because I know I was a teacher at the time uh, at Cutter Junior High, and believe me, those kids went to that theater and they saw those kung fu movies because they practiced the moves on each other. <laughs> <laughs> My father told me a story. My father was a very straight man. He didn't break any rules. He was, was scared of everything. But one day he and his friends in high school, he let his friends talk him into skipping school. And they went downtown Cincinnati and they found themselves somehow pulled into the Gaiety Theater. And he said he was sitting there and it wasn't too long and this older guy comes in and sits down next to him and it's his father. Oh. And his father says, what are you doing in here? And my father said, well, what are you doing in here? And at which time they decided they would not let my grandmother know that he was not You say nothing nicely. I want to thank you folks very much. Thank you.